The Holy Trinity is finally here for home buyers and Lookout Realtors, a friendly face, may be feeding you with one hand while pickpocketing you with the other. We are loaded with data and intel today. Stay focused because we're gonna go fast. Some really good news at the end as well. Last week, we talked about Landy and a company started by the very person that created the NAR lawsuit, a company designed to compete and ultimately steal realtor clients. And what an evil genius plan it is. Deal NAR and realtors a massive blow and then create a new solution to swoop in afterwards. Like I said, a real life Scooby-Doo episode. Anyways, this week, the threat comes from somewhat of a friendly face. Hint, the call is coming from inside the house. We traced the call. It's coming from inside the house. You hear me? It's coming from inside the house. Bonus points if you can name that reference and movie in the comments section below. Yes, the call or the threat in this case is coming from inside the house or very close to you. A friendly face that may have or may be feeding you now. You guessed it, Zillow. Now, team, we've warned and have talked about this for years. Be careful financing Zillow with your lead spin because we could be financing Zillow while they're building their empire. That will ultimately take over. You know that old saying, he who control the lead controls the consumer. I don't think that's exactly how it goes, but you know what I'm saying. Let's be honest, most people start their real estate search online. And let's also be honest, they don't just start there, they live there. That's really good news for companies like Zillow and Redfin. After all, if you have that much control, why would you sell a lead when you can finance the loan or write the purchase and sale contract yourself? Well, this isn't the Ari source telling you be careful working with them anymore. It's already here. Check it out. The Zillow CEO confirming our warnings and telling us exactly where they're headed. Played at 1.5 speed for the sake of time. Many of us use Zillow every day. We love Zillow. We're on Zillow Dreaming. And most of America knows us for dreaming and shopping. But very few folks who are on Zillow actually transact, actually work with our premier agents or agent partners, get a loan from Zillow Home Loans, use our software and services and our great agents. So that's our goal is to grow our share of transactions. Our target is just 6% of transactions by the end of 2025. And our audience share is in the 60, 70%. So our goal is really to convert more of that audience into folks who want to and can use our services to buy and to sell their homes and to rent and find their next place to rent. So that's really our goal and our focus. And if we do that, we know revenue will grow. We know company value will grow and the company will be a bigger company over time. Jeremy, it's no secret that when you are looking at a home in America, in many places, you're looking at a very short supply. You're looking at really high housing prices, let alone still relatively high mortgage rates if you were trying to buy a new home, move out of your existing home. So what does it take for you to make that translation, to get people to buy more homes? Is it expensive on your part also to really double down on that marketing to get people to choose you? The housing market is challenged, especially for first time home buyers. As you said, mortgage rates are high, which has squeezed their affordability and home prices have come up sharply from pre pandemic levels while inventory remains low and folks are locked into their lower mortgage rates. That makes it a tough market out there. That said, people still need to move. And so while home turnover is at near all time lows, a little more than 4 million seasonally adjusted from a norm of five and a half to 6 million homes a trade a year, folks are still moving. And those folks are starting their home search more and more online. They're looking for ways to do things more digitally. They're looking for ways to take a tour, press a button, schedule a tour the way you'd book a restaurant. They're looking for ways to get pre-approved digitally. So building the services for folks who can get it done sets us up well to help more of them when it gets easier for folks to actually buy and sell. I have to ask also about the changes in the industry, just even at the granular level. There's this idea here now that the industry could change pretty meaningfully as commissions change as well, new rules around commissions. How do you expect that to play out? Yeah, the changes that came as a result of a settlement right in the industry we see as evolutionary not revolutionary and those evolutionary changes are great for consumers they're really about helping buyers and sellers get more educated now every buyer has to sign a contract with their agent whereas before they, they might have or they might not have depending on who they worked with that's going to lead buyers to understand how the process works understand what things cost but Jimmy, what does it mean for you can zillow be making any changes to kind of lean into these new changes absolutely one of the big things we did as the settlement came out was we pioneered an agreement a buyer's agreement with our agents and so we led what we call a touring agreement our big focus is ensuring that buyers and sellers are in control and are empowered and so it's really important for us to make sure buyers Buyers can make a choice that they're in control. And so when they sign an agreement, maybe you sign a non-exclusive agreement first as you're shopping around and finding an agent before you, you know, move from dating to getting married to an agent and you sign an exclusive agreement. So we led the industry to pioneer what we call a touring agreement so that these buyers, especially first-time home buyers, as they learn the process, they are able to make the right decision for them. They can shop around and find a great agent. He said it at the very beginning of the clip. They are very aware that they control the consumer and they now want to monetize that, which I totally get. It makes sense for them. Hey, I'm a capitalist, guys. I'm not mad at them for this. It's actually really incredibly smart, but it will take transactions away from lenders and realtors. Redfin's transformation is almost complete. They have both realtors and lender options that they actually own. Traditional lenders and realtors, this isn't something to fear, but it is something to be aware of. The industry is evolving, but that doesn't mean it has to evolve without you. We just need to make sure that we're evolving with it. Let's finish with some really good news. We opened the show with the holy trinity for home buyers, and that appears to be here 
for them. What is the real estate holy trinity, you ask? Well, first, housing payments are dropping fast. This is great news for home affordability. We've seen year over year decreases in housing payments, and, and if this continues, guys, we should drop below 2022 affordability as well, which is great. Second, home sales are falling as well, which puts pressure, downward pressure, good news, on home values and ultimately lowers them, which also helps to increase home affordability. Pending sales down almost 10% year over year, and that's the lowest levels we've seen in years, which helps to create and ultimately complete the last part of the home buyer trinity, which is supply. Supply is way up, 3.6 months of supply, highest in recent history, which again is great news for buyers. They have quite a few more options to choose from and they can do so at a healthy pace without 30 other offers to compete with and having to waive inspection. This is great news for home buyers. Let's get the word out and share this with them. Lower payments, lower prices, and more options. Let's go. This is great for housing and can unlock a lot of home sellers as well as they have been on the sideline for years. Oh, hey there, it's Ricky, your favorite Gen Z editor, just getting ready for the show. Actually, are you subscribed yet? It's quick, easy, and free, and gives you plus 500 or so let's hop back into it. One last resource for you guys to leverage here to help you and your buyers find the best opportunities. Check this out. It's an interactive map that shows the inventory changes nationwide. And there's some startling data in here. For instance, my home state of Washington, inventory is back to 2017 levels, a massive increase of 49% year over year. Florida is off the charts and saw a 66% increase in inventory year over year. And that inventory is at levels that we haven't seen in over a decade. Pretty wild. And there's only two states where inventory actually shrank. All great news for buyers though. We packed a ton of information in today. We hope you guys all appreciate the hard work and the resources that went in today's show. If you do so, please leverage them and share the show. And we'll see you guys next week.